Grades, grades, grades. What grades do you really need to get into medical school and what grades should you have to give you a realistic chance of actually getting in? So, a common misconception is that for medicine you need extremely high grades, that you need full marks in every single subject and every single module that you do. However, this is not true. And in this video I'm going to talk about what sort of grades you should be having or thinking about attaining to have a really good shot at getting in. So as most people say, your grades do need to be pretty good to get into medical school. We're going to go through what sort of grades you need for GCSE, AS levels, A levels, BMAT and UKCAT to have a realistic shot. Now before I go on, I do want to make clear that the grades that I'm saying are from my experience and from my research and stuff that you may find online may differ. Of course, do your own research and this is a rough guide. So firstly, GCSEs. To have a good set of GCSEs is, is extremely beneficial, mainly because your GCSEs are sat in year 10 and year 11, two to three years before you apply. And so doing well in your GCSEs shows that over the long term, you've been getting good grades. So it's really important to do as well as you can in these exams. The average number of GCSEs held by most offer holders and placeholders is around six to seven, the more A stars you get, the better. A's and B's are still acceptable grades, but you want to make sure that you don't have too many of those. If some exams do go badly, you might get one B or two B's, and these will be fine, but make sure that the B isn't in a key subject. For example, some medical schools require A stars in certain subjects or A's in certain subjects as a sort of minimum criteria. For example, English language, I'm pretty sure you need at least a B or an A in that required by most medical schools. And in your GCC biology, physics and chemistry exams, they're looking for A's and A stars. It's really important to state that medical schools mostly do look at the school at which you did your GCSEs. This is because not all schools have the same teaching facilities and the resources available to students. For example, let's say you're a student at a school where the facilities aren't as extensive and the teaching isn't as great as it could be. Getting six or seven A stars at such a school is an amazing achievement because it shows that although the support you've had from your school isn't as great, that you've still been proactive, that you've been independent, and that you've worked hard for your grades. Now this may be seen as equal to a student at a really good school who's had really good facilities and really good teaching getting 10 or 11 A stars. Of course, if you think about it, good teaching and good support in terms of academia correlates with good grades. So even if you aren't at the best of schools, make sure that you try your hardest because medical schools do take this into account. So ideally, to have a competitive application, anything more than 9A stars will be seen as extremely competitive. But as I mentioned, the average is 6 or 7. So to summarise, GCSEs are an important indicator of long-term commitment and academic achievement. Moving on to AS levels. AS levels are a very good indicator of how well you do in your A2 examination. Now I do understand that there's a new system where schools have internal AS exams or external AS exams, which do seem quite inconvenient. We have to do AS exams and then A2 exams externally. However, AS level exams are really important because they show how committed you are and how hardworking you are. AS and A level exams are extremely difficult and a good grade shows that you've been working throughout the year consistently but of course some students do manage to work really hard at the last minute and get good grades as well. But in general, AS and A2 exams show long term commitment and work. Now at AS level, whether that's internal or external, you want to make sure you're getting at least 4 A's or 3 A's in a B. This is because your AS level exams lead on to your A2 prediction. Now at AS level there are some key subjects in which you really need an A to have a competitive application to medical school. These subjects include chemistry and biology. If you have done some research, you may have noticed that a lot of medical schools really find chemistry important, and more recently biology as well. So, it's really important that you try your best for chemistry and then biology. Now, you may have noticed that I haven't mentioned maths. Now, math by most medical schools isn't considered a compulsory subject. People can get in without doing math, but most people do do maths. They do maths, biology, chemistry, and another subject, whether it's physics or geography or history, whatever suits you. And I think that maths is really important. In my opinion, compared to biology and chemistry, maths is a bit more straightforward. This is because in maths there's less theory. Technically you can do really well in maths by just doing loads of past papers. You simply need to understand the concept first and then sort of apply that and practice, practice, practice. And from your mistakes you'll learn quite quickly. But there'll be a separate video on A-levels and the, and the different subjects um, and my tips on those. So if you were to prioritise your AS subjects in which you need to do the best, it would be chemistry, biology and then maths. Now some medical schools do prefer a fourth science, others don't. So after your GCSEs, before choosing AS levels, Look at medical school websites and choose your AS levels um, depending on which sort of medical schools you're applying to. However, as a general rule, you can't really go wrong with maths, physics, biology and chemistry, but it's up to you. Now, A2 grades are really important, or your predictions anyway. 
This is because your predictions give medical schools a good indicator of how likely you are to sort of meet the grades that they're looking for. Now, medical schools have requirements of A star AA or A star A star A. If your predictions meet or exceed these grades, the medical schools will have trust in you to get these grades because they rely on your school's opinion and they take your school's word for your abilities. If your grade predictions don't meet the requirements of a medical school, you may be rejected very soon after you submit your application. There may be some sort of exceptions to this, but I haven't come across any of such. So it's important to remember that if you do get any offers, after you get your offers, to really work hard to secure your A2 grades. The last thing that you want is getting an offer from the medical school that you've dreamed about getting to for many years and then missing out. So once you get your offer, work as hard as you can. Ideally, in terms of A2 predictions, you want an A star and two A's. You don't want any B's in there. In the ideal situation, you'll get two A stars and an A, or maybe a three A star prediction. Or if you're doing four or more subjects, A stars and a few A's, or maybe even all A star predictions. The more A stars you're predicted, the stronger the medical school will consider you. To get really good A2 predictions, you need to make sure you ace your AS level exams. Because your school use your AS level exams, think of reasonable predictions that they think you can attain in the second year. So what you need to do is really grind during year 12 because your year 12 grades are what will get you as many A stars being predicted at A2. Even if you're predicted 3 A stars at A2 and your offer is only A star AA, you don't need to actually get 3 A stars in your H examinations. You simply need to meet your offer. So what I'm trying to say is, if you smash your AS level exams, you can get really high prediction, get your offer and then work in a manner to just simply meet the offer. So there's actually less stress in year 13 to get the grades. So just to reiterate, year 12 is the year to grind and get those A star and A predictions. Now just a small bit about BMAT and UK CAT. A good UK CAT score is considered to be around 650. Anything above 700 is considered extremely good. Now a few students do get 800, 900, but in general with 650 you can apply to most medical schools. I know that some more popular medical schools require or seem to favour candidates with scores above 700. So in the UK CAT make sure to prepare at least a month and a half in advance and keep grinding until the exam day. Don't cram the night before. If you get a score of, of above 700, you stand a very good chance of getting interviews from pretty much every UK Catch university that you apply to. The BMAT is another very important exam in which you need to do well. An average score is around a mid five, a high five. So it's important that you try and at least hit the average or exceed them. Now, of course, there are three sections. Section one is very much like the UK Cat. So if you prepare really well for the UK Cat, you should be in good stead for section one. In section two, if you prepare and learn all the content, it's quite easy to do well in. Remember, in section two, if you gain one or two extra marks, you can bounce up from maybe, I don't know, 6.4 to a 7.2. So what I'm trying to say is, in the BMAT, every single mark counts, because that could literally mean you getting a completely different score, which will make you from, you know, an amazing candidate to an exceptional candidate. And we both know which one you'd rather be. In section three, you want to get at least a three in your content. Of course, most people with decent handwriting will have good grammar and will get an A in the grammar and the spag sort of section of that. But if you get a B, it's not the end of the world. If you get a C, you still have a good chance, as long as your content is good. The reasons for getting Bs and Cs can be either for poor grammar or for really bad handwriting. And if you've got bad handwriting, it looks as if your spelling's incorrect often. So, to summarize, to have a competitive application, in my opinion, these are the sorts of grades you need. At GCSE, you want at least nine A stars. You want mostly A stars, a few A's, and in the worst of cases, one or two Bs. At AS level, you want to have mostly A's, and those A's should be high A's. B in a subject, let's say that's not chemistry, biology, and maths, is all right, because you're not carrying that on to A2. But remember, you might as well do as well as you can and really grind during year 12, because you know that the predictions you get from your year 12 grades will make you seem like an amazing candidate if you can go as well for you. Now, in your A2 examinations, the grades you require will depend on your offer. However, again, you want to do as well as you can, so, you know, as soon as you get your offer, begin grinding from January. If you grind from January to June, you by all means exceed your offer. Getting A stars isn't as easy as it sounds, and it does require hard work and commitment. But if you choose to work hard, and if you try your best, it will really come across. And medical schools will see this. If you're a hard-working and committed person, which both are qualities of a doctor, you'll come across three grades. If things do go badly for you in one exam, or a few exams, don't worry. Forget about that exam, you can't change it, and make sure you smash the next one. Because you need to remember, at the end of the day, not everyone's perfect. So what's important is to try your best. Now hopefully that video was useful, and I'll be posting more videos like this during the summer. Please like this video if you did find it useful, comment with any questions you have, whether you think your grades are good enough, and make sure to subscribe for more content like this. And also about my life at Cambridge, because I'll be producing quite a few videos about my first year at Cambridge. As I mentioned, 
the advice that I have given is from my experience and from my research. I have linked below a really useful document which outlines the requirements of every single medical school. So make sure you thoroughly go through that and see whether your grades are suitable for medical schools you're looking, looking to apply to. Remember. If you want to increase the chances of getting into a medical school, you need to apply to medical schools that look for grades that your grades are compatible with. And if your grades meet or exceed the requirements, then as I mentioned, you've got a good chance.